A Palestinian American family is in mourning after 42 of their relatives were killed by airstrikes in Gaza. In just one day's time, three generations of this family were gone, the youngest among them just three months old. Some of the images you're about to see are disturbing. CNN's Isabel Rosales brings us their story. A crowd of neighbors and survivors working together to bury loved ones. Wrapped in white burial shrouds, their bodies are carried and lined up inside a mass grave. They belong to one family. Thousands of miles away in the U.S., family members across three states are united in grief. I'm still in this nightmare. I'm still not, I haven't woke up yet. In Florida, Iyad Abu Shaban can't bear the unimaginable loss. That's my cousin, his son. Three generations gone in a single day. Back-to-back -back airstrikes, the family says, in Gaza, killing 42 relatives. The youngest, just three months old, Abu Shaban tells CNN. A video shot by a neighbor shows charred ruins and rubble, all that's left of the Sakala family compound. We've never seen in this day and age what, where the whole world is watching innocent people just being torn apart, family, whole families just wiped off the map. The family blames the deaths on Israeli airstrikes. CNN cannot independently confirm that. Israel has launched numerous airstrikes on Gaza City since the terror attacks on October 7, including multiple strikes in the area that day. The Israel Defense Forces did not comment on the purported airstrikes. I mean, in my family members, we have no Hamas members. They're just ordinary people, doctors and, and grandmothers and grandfathers and uncles and aunts and, and children. I mean, if you want to exterminate Hamas, they, you should go to the source. Among the dead, four brothers, all doctors. Family members say they operated Gaza's largest network of family-owned eye clinics. An independent journalist on the ground captured the aftermath and the moment survivors pulled body after body from beneath the rubble, including Mona Abu Shaban's uncle, his wife, and son. The three had recently left their home in a different part of the city to stay at the Sakala compound, Mona says. Their previous home where they were at before, they were told to evacuate. So they assumed that they were going to be safe. So they went to a safe area, a safe house, basically. Watching from afar in Ohio, Mona is pleading not only for a ceasefire, but long-term action. You know, we can't just say, okay, we're going to stop bombing and then it's over. You have to give them you know, their dignity. You have to give the Palestinians a place to call home. In Minnesota, community members fill up an Islamic center, praying in support of the Sakala family. In the face of so much loss, their family has no time to properly mourn. Overcome by constant worry for the more than two million Palestinians in Gaza caught in the crossfire. There's a sense of helplessness. There's no, the only thing we can do is pray.